I like to be left here and I enjoy a lot is, is, um, is, is getting the most out of what you've got. And I think most of us are in that situation. You can afford the best equipment and you can you know, take nice pictures. But if, it's, if you've got less than the top end stuff, how do you get the most out of it? So what I we thought I would do at first is just show you some of the tricks and some of the things that I've gone through in the past to try to optimize my setup and get better results out of it. And that's very important for getting the second part done, which is when you sit down and look at some process. So that's okay. That's um, what to do. Um, but the thing is, the first tip that I wanted to give you is you really have to get a nails down because you can't use processing to to overcome problems in having your stuff tuned up properly. So you can't use you can't use image processing to correct um, problems. If the image is not already on the camera at the home, it's not going to be there until you do some processing. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that part A. And, um, and so I'll give you some thoughts on my, my approach and kind of especially how to, how to adjust your goals and expectations so that you're not frustrated uh, and so that you know what to expect out of what you've got and then um, we'll look at processing. And so, okay, I've already said this, but you really need to adjust your goals. If you want the really best images in the world and you really do need the best equipment in the world, there's just no substitute for that. Um, so go shopping at Jeff's uh, PDF presentation last month and pick out what you can buy. But um, if you don't, if you don't, if you can't do that, if you just want to have fun, if you just want to have better images, you, know, you, can, you can have fun with what you've got. You have the right attitude at it. And that's one of the things I really enjoy a lot is just going out in there and messing around. And so the real goal is not to get, for me, is not to get the best pictures, but to have fun uh, and to get out there and, and see people and, and, and learn about the sky, learn about the equipment, and mainly the problem that I see that I've struggled with for so many years and I see everyone out of this mm -hmm. run into frustration with your equipment, you get frustrated and what not being able to do better uh, because you don't really know what to expect out of what you've got and you expect more than you can get and you know, the patient shuts it out and you know, you just go doing it. So the point is to is to have the right amount of patience and with that right amount of patience you can get you can get better results out of what you've got. So I'll give you a few tips of where I kind of show you what I've done in the past to, to help me stay interested in the hobby. So, um, but you have to know that it's going to be hard. It's a lot of work. It's not something you can just, uh, you know, fix a, a month or weekend and, and everything's working right. Um, and, and you have to know how your what the limitations of your equipment is, and then you have to spend the effort. You have to like doing this. You have to like tinkering around with it. You have to like. Uh, putting in long nights and, and failing a lot before this works. But if you, if you do all that, I mean, if you have that attitude towards it, then it's going to take a lot of time. So here's, the, here's, the, here's my approach, here's my attitude to going out there and imaging. Um, it took me a long time to get past this, to this bottom part, the solution. And I see a lot of people still have a lot of trouble with that. And, and so it really comes from a realization that the reality of the situation is the equipment the telescope is never functioning the way it should. There's always some little thing that's not quite right. And there's are not perfect, right? There's always something to improve. And so uh, there's a real battle between fixing that and the precious time that you've got out there. We go out once a month, and you've got one and a half of our night to spend um, um, to try to get something done. And the problem is that this imaging is, no matter how good everything is set up. Imaging is a battle of its time. Um, the biggest telescope is going to need hours, I mean, literally hours of open shutter time to get up at any kind of deep space object uh, in, 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 in an image of it that you're going to be happy with. And that's especially true if you've got a little scope. If you've got a big scope, or I think you can get an image in that. Uh, you know, but then if you've got a big scope, you're, you're not going to be happy with it now. So no matter what you've got, you, you're gonna you're gonna want to spend all night with the shutter open, and so you don't have time to be out there and plan the problems. Uh, and if you do, you're gonna very quickly get into that frustration issue where 
you've been out there three times and you, you know, have kind of a show for it. So my, I've always felt like uh, that it's, that it's important not to waste your energy time out there. If you go out, you spend the time to get a hall pass from, you know, from the leader of the house and pack your gear and set up and, and you're out there all night, uh, you, you need to try to spend that time, as much of that time as you can energy, not solve the problem. So how do you keep, how do you how do you how, how does that fit in with the problem with the reality that nothing's ever working right? Like. So I, I I kind of have this strategy where I, I go out there and I set things up and I find try to always find what's causing the biggest problem at the moment. Like what's the thing that's causing my image to have its its defect that, that I see right away? And if I know how to fix that, I fix it. Right? And then I go on to the next most biggest problem. I keep doing that until I get to the point where I can't, whatever it is, is messing with I don't know quite how to solve it in you know, the next 20 minutes. So at that point, it's time to start taking pictures because that's about as good as you're going to do for the night. So get what you can, get some pictures, and take them all, and that's something to show for So And then remember what you go into, what you ran into, and then come home. And then at home, or some other time, and you're not uh, trying to, you know, I start skyscraping. Yes, to work on your problem at home. And so if you do that, I think you, you end up making progress. And so that's what, that's what I do. So you have to tend to have it. And so that requires you to know the limits of your setup, know where the weak points are, and then um, and notice those while you're trying to use it, but then go home and think about it and work on those problems at home so that the next time you come out, it'll work on so let's, so an example of what I've done, uh, this is my current setup. It's what I consider to be, uh, I guess everyone can say, this is what I consider to be the minimal setup for decent imaging. Uh, anything less than this, and I'd be real happy with it. Five things I don't want to fight with. Um, the mount of G11 from Boston Abbey. Uh, I'm using the SCT, which in my case is the biggest problem. Vince Burke refers it to as the piece of Schmidt. It's really it's probably my weakest part of the session. Uh, my guide scopes is Orion AED, which is a decent, cheap refractor. I use it most of the time as a guide scope, but sometimes I shoot through it. Uh, I guide through a little webcam, a, a next image, imaging um, planetary camera that's a manly only AED, and I shoot pictures through a, a modified. Um, and 20D. And uh, I use sort of the standard field software that everybody uses. Most of it's free or very free. And um, so this is my setup. It's been that way for a while. I probably would should upgrade some stuff, but um, I just had fun optimizing this. And so that's what I want to show you. This, this, this is what I consider to be the biggest weakness of all of these components. As I, look, as I started using them, most of these are pretty obvious. You know, the weakest part, the stock starting at the top, the weakest part of my, when I got things set up was the, 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 the DSLRs don't have very good sensitivity in the infrared, especially like H alpha. So um, there's, there's H alpha sensitivity issue with the camera. The next weakest part of the setup is, of course, the Schmidt passive rings. It's got a, not terribly good optics, it's got really bad coma, so you know, end up with these problems on the edge of the camera. Not much you can do about that. And uh, one of the biggest problems I've had to struggle with is mirror flaw. This thing is terrible. The mirrors, you won't stay put and some track the mirror moves in the air and changes the color. So that's, uh, that's a problem all Schmidt has a range. Some of them have it worse than others. Mine have a pretty bad mirror flaw. And, uh, this mirror is sitting on a tube, a central tube. It's really supported in a large part by that central bathroom. And it, it, it focuses by being pushed in and out. And as the telescope moves and shifts, that big, heavy primary will rock a little bit. It's just not well seated. Isn't that what the lock was supposed to do? The mirror lock? The stop it from doing that? Some of the mean scopes have a mirror lock on them, and the, and the, 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 the Celestron's never have it. And that's, I'm going to show you in just a minute how I dealt with this. Some people try to put locks in. Some people think locks are a bad idea. 